I'm testing out the X2 Jacketed Conical Fermenter from Brewbuilt. I'm breaking it down, building it up, and putting it to the test with some surprising results. I'm Martin Keane, and this is The Brewlosophy Show. So this is the X2 Conical Fermenter from Brewbuilt, and it's the jacketed version, which I'll explain in a sec. I did want to point out that this video is not sponsored. More Beer did provide me with this unit to put to the test, but everything I'm going to tell you today is going to be my actual experience with the product good and bad. So let me give you a, a quick tour of this thing. I have it on casters. Spins around, looks beautiful. So yeah, conical fermenter, which means it's got this cone shape at the bottom, and it is absolutely covered in ports. So at the very bottom here, we have a two inch opening and I have this closed off right now with a blanking plate, but there are some things you can add to this. So that's for dumping out trube and uh, harvesting yeast, that sort of thing. Then as you move on up, we've got three ports here. What's nice about these is that they are horizontal and very low down in the fermenter. And why that's important is because if you're not brewing a full batch, so I'm brewing five gallon batches normally, but sometimes I do much smaller than that. Well, if your thermometer is all the way up the top here, then you're not going to get a reading. And some of my equipment is like that. So having everything super low down here means that I'm able to brew much smaller batches in this thing. And on the side here, we have these ports here. What is this? This is for the jacketed part. So this section here is an area where you can circulate cold liquid, most likely glycol. So you can send glycol in and out through here. This is much more like a professional setup. Professional setups generally don't use cooling coils, they use jackets, and that's what this is. There's also a bunch of accessories for this, but before I sit down and show you all of this, let's get going with brewing a beer. When it gets to this time of year, I often find myself hankering after a wheat beer. So that's what I'm brewing today. I'm brewing a Weiss beer using Marshall Schott's short and shoddy recipe. The malt bill for this, very simple. It's 50% Pilsner malt, 50% white wheat malt. I'm gonna do a five and a half gallon batch, which should be a good test for the fermenter. And uh, looking around five, 5.1% for this beer when it's finished. Now, specifically the Pilsner malt is from Epiphany Craft Malt, and I got to visit them. They're local to me near Durham, North Carolina, and they hooked me up with a ton of grain. So thank you very much, Epiphany. Really excited to try out all of your stuff. All right, 152 Fahrenheit, 67 Celsius for about an hour. Not really designed for bringing it up onto tables. Uh, but while I have got it here, I wanted to show you some of the extras that come with this and some of the cool things you can do. So as I mentioned here, we have this port here that we can open and close. Have it blanked off right now. Okay, so that's, that's open right now. What sort of uses do we have for something like this? Well, the obvious thing I think is cleaning. When you're spraying water through here, it can come out the bottom. You could maybe hook up some tubing there or just put a bucket underneath this. There is quite a lot of clearance down here, which is nice. You can also use it for yeast harvesting. Uh, another thing that it's very useful for is dry hopping, especially if you use a lot of dry hops. I do find that I am able to clog up some of my other conical fermenters. And it comes with this flex chamber, which is basically a collection jar. So you can clamp this to the bottom under here, and you could also pressurize this. So we could put in some posts here that would allow us to put pressure in as well. And yeah, I've already mentioned this, but I'm gonna point it out again because it's such a good feature. Three horizontal 1.5 inch ports here, which you can do what you want with. It came with a thermal well and this sample tap as well. But I think the real magic is what happens up top. So this is the lid of the X2 and it is customized with the pressure pack and actually customized further beyond that as well. So this is a pressurized fermenter. It can hold some pressure. It's rated for 15 PSI and it recommends if you are going to use this for pressure fermentation to pressure ferment around 10 to 12 PSI to be safe. Let's break this down. I'm going to take this off because this doesn't come with it by default. So what have we got? We've got two 1.5 inch ports at the top here and then we have this bigger port. I think this is three inches. Over here 
is the PRV. Now this pad I find very interesting because I have other fermenters that have a lid that has a hole like this in it. This hole here is typically used for cooling. I normally put a cooling coil in here, like this guy. So you'd put your cooling coil in here and then that's taken up all the space. But because this is jacketed, I don't need this, which means I can do other things with this. And this is the other things I can do. Look, this is really cool. So put what you want on here. You could put a spunning valve on here, something, I don't know. But we have these posts, the gas and liquid posts. They're marked beer out and gas in. And the beer out goes to this floating dip tube. So instead of using that sample port to get my beer out, I can apply a bit of pressure and then use this floating dip tube to take my beer out instead. And this will sit at the top of the liquid in the fermenter and draw from the top. So I should be leaving all of the crud in the fermenter by using this. Now this is the box that comes with it for the pressure pack. If you don't get this, then it comes with a blow off barb instead. The trouble with using a blow off barb is you can't apply pressure, so you'd have to remove it cap this. At that point I have now opened up my fermenter to oxygen. So for that reason I'm also using this spunding valve that's going to take the place of that blow-off barb. Now this provides two benefits. One is it takes the place of the blow-off barb and I can crank this down to close it when I don't want to vent any pressure from this and I can open it up to whatever I want in order to let pressure out. So during fermentation for example fill this with water and I can vent the pressure that way. But it also addresses the one concern I have about this lid, and that relates to the PRV. I'm a little bit concerned about the tiny little hole that is on the end here. Look how small that hole is, and that's my way of venting pressure. If that gets blocked, I'm gonna have a problem getting pressure out of this thing. So that is why I really like to use 1.5 inch tri-clamp spunning valves because the gap here is so much bigger, so much less likely to get blocked up. The other thing with this setup is it doesn't come with a pressure gauge. There are plenty of places to put a pressure gauge, um, but it doesn't come with one. So if you want to know exactly how much pressure is in this thing, uh, by default, you can't. Plenty of opportunity to add one in though. Now, the other thing to consider with pressure is this gasket here. You put this gasket in and then you clamp down with this clamp here. The original unit that I received from Morbeer wasn't holding pressure very well. I could only hold about two PSI of pressure before it would vent. It was either the gasket or it was this clamp that was the problem. They sent me a replacement for both and that fixed the issue. But I did just want to mention that, that initially I did have a little bit of trouble holding pressure. Now though, with the correct gasket and clamp, it's holding pressure fine. All right, I think it's time to finish up this beer and give this a go. Now, this is a short, shoddy recipe, which means it has a 30 minute boil. And you know what they say about 30 minute boils? Good, and we've done it half the time. I love 30 minute boils. So for this beer, very minimal hop additions. I'm using Magnum as my bittering hop. Just five grams of this, that's all I need. That's going in at the start of the 30 minute boil. And at 15 minutes, I'm going to be adding in my second edition. Marshall used Sapphire. I don't have Sapphire, so I'm going to substitute that for Halatel Mittelfra. Overall, this will be a beer with an IBU of just about 13. I sanitized the X2 with Star Sand and then let it drain out the bottom and straight into my sink with a nifty little attachment. Then I chilled the wort and added it into the X2. I was a little bit above my intended pitching temperature, which was 70 Fahrenheit or 21 Celsius. I was at about 75. So I hooked the X2 up to my glycol system and pumped glycol through that integrated jacket. Now, normally when I need to use glycol to chill the last few degrees, it will take a little while. I'll normally clear up the brewery, wash everything out, it takes 20 minutes or so. And by that point, I'm normally at pitch temperature. Well, this guy acts a lot faster than that, to say the least. I plugged this in at 75 Fahrenheit and it got down to below 70. In fact, it kind of overshot a few degrees to around 66 in like five minutes or so. Super fast and efficient. There is about five and a half gallons in here. That is the recommended maximum for this system. This is a seven gallon system. And there is an additional part that I haven't used and I can kind of hear the 
More beer guys shouting at the screen right now as they're watching this. Like, why didn't you use it? That's this, the neoprene jacket. This comes with it. It would obviously help insulate things, but you know what? This looks so pretty as it is, I'm going without the jacket. So I'm gonna leave this now to ferment and keep an eye on it. I've got my airlock here fully open, so any pressure will just come out of the airlock. See how fermentation goes. Well, how it goes was eventful. I used Imperial Yeast G01 Stefan, and boy, was it a lively strain. Within a day, Croizen had bubbled up everywhere into my airlock and even into the pressure relief valve. I felt fully justified in my use of a wide mouth spunding valve as I did have concerns that when Croizen dried up, it could block the PRV, although fortunately that didn't turn out to be the case. Now, I don't really think any of this is the fault of the X2 per se, it was just I was using the fermenter at maximum capacity, using a yeast strain well known for its vigorous nature and about a day later things settled down and I had everything cleaned up. A couple of weeks later I cold crashed with glycol and here I found myself regretting skipping the neoprene jacket as I ended up with so much condensation I opted to collect it on a tray. I knew they shipped that jacket for a reason. From there I applied CO2 and pressure transferred to a sanitized keg using the floating dip tube. And here it is, the beer itself. This will be my first time trying it. Well, the aroma's good. More on the clove side than the banana. Oh, such a good springtime beer. So how do we wrap this thing up? What do I think of the X2? Well, yes, this was sent to me by More Beer, but they had no say in, in my review of it whatsoever. Um, it wasn't a page review or anything like that. So these are my honest opinions. I really like it. I love the fact that it has this jacket around it for the glycol. That turned out to be very useful. But look, when it comes to fermentation, I'm a little bit of a tinkerer. I like to put attachments on, play with things, different ways to dry hop, to carbonate, all that sort of stuff. And the fact that there are so many ports on this thing in so many places, there's some really low down so I can use that for small batches. There's stuff on the lid that I can, I can attach whenever I want to it. I think I'm gonna have a lot of fun using this thing. All right, that's it. I'll be back next week, and until then, think beer.